and welcome back to the Open Networking Summit. This is a From the Top segment with TIA Now. We're here with Guido Appenzeller. He's the Chief Technology Strategy Officer for Networking and Security at VMware. And Guido, welcome to the program. Thank you, great to be here. Thanks for being here. It's a real pleasure to have you uh, with us in our mobile studio here at ONS uh, 2015. I want to talk about, um, first, how the conversation around SDN has changed. You know, that's been one of the, the most interesting things for me, I think, that has happened in the last year, right? That uh, if you look back at uh, SDN, I've been doing it since, since 2008, you know, when I was still as a professor at Stanford uh, running the OpenFlow project there. Uh, you know, and basically, the whole time from 2008 until now, um, we've been fighting architectural battles, right? We've been going to, I've been going to a customer, trying to persuade the customer instead of the old hardware-based approach to networking, they should try out software-defined networking. And there were long discussions, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but it was always a battle. And, and that conversation has changed. Um, and I, I can still sort of remember, I think the first time when I really experienced it, it was when visiting uh, Wall Street um, uh, 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 last year. Uh, late last year, and uh, you know, I had a conversation there where basically I came armed with my deck that you know exudes all the virtues of SDN and, and you're trying to, to get them excited. And you know, basically the, the guy on the other side of the table, he was basically like, "Look, uh, I, I don't want to have that conversation. We, we've talked internally. We understand SDN is going to be part of our future data center, right? What I'm really worried about now is what does that mean? Can you tell me about how do we deploy this? What does it mean for the process? What does it mean for the people?" What does it mean for the training? You know, can I still have silos with networking storage and so on, or do I need to unify this? So suddenly, the discussion about SDN is not an if, it's a how. It's people are trying to, to understand what it means to deploy this in their data center. Now, the driver for SDN uh, uh, two, three years back, or even as far back as 2008, has certainly changed. Now the driver I'm hearing is security. Is that the case? It's one of the drivers. I mean, you know, the, if, if, if I have to break it down, uh, we're seeing three major use cases for SDN that, that drive the vast majority of our deployments. Um, you know, the, the currently, it's not the most common one, but it's certainly the, the fastest growing one, and I think it's just a sign of the times, is security, right? In a, in a modern data center, typically a lot of the investment around security is in the perimeter, you know, because you're trying to get a very secure firewall, but you invest very little sort of in, in getting visibility inside your network. Right? Once an attacker is through the firewall, they can move around and you have very little to stop them. And it turns out that with um, software-defined networking, um, you know, and specifically what we call micro-segmentation, you can now actually provide um, you know, an, an IT organization with super fine-grained visibility about every connection in their data center. You can basically create these very small network segments uh, you know, that basically make your, your data center very resilient against compromises. Even if one server gets hacked, the, the attacker cannot expand, right? So it's a, it, it's, it's, a ver it's a new security paradigm. It's very, very powerful, and it's driving, I want to say, about 40% or so of our deployments right now. Now, you're probably the third person today that's talked about micro-segmentation. Um, and, and if you need a few minutes to think about this, please take it. Can you give us an example of, of in, in real-world terms, what, what that is? Sure. So the, the core idea of micro-segmentation is to say, um, I want to basically create very, very small firewalled areas in my data center, right? So in the extreme, put a firewall around every single server. Right. If you try to do this with a physical firewall, it's impossible. Right? I mean, you, you basically have to now firewall all your east-west bandwidth, the amount of firewall capacity you need. You know, probably half your rack would be firewalls just you know, to get to that, to that uh, necessary bandwidth. And, and also, the complexity of the rules that you need with, with traditional approaches is more or less impossible. Right? With software-defined networking, you can basically get to an architecture where you say, I'm defining a new application, right? And basically, by default, I have firewalls everywhere. You know, no, no server can talk to another server. Instead, I'm allowing certain connections, right? The web tier can talk to the application tier on a certain port. The application tier can talk to the database on a certain port. You know, I have some ports open for backup and monitoring purposes, but that's it. Any other connection in the data center will be blocked, right? It's a, it's a much more modern security architecture. It provides a very high degree of protection. But the, the nice thing is can be easily retrofitted. So you don't have to change your network architecture. You don't have to change your subnets or your, you know, your, your layer two domains, your IP addressing. All of this can stay the same. You can simply insert this on top. TI now is involved in uh, part or SDN part two. This part of our Network of the Future documentary series um, on SDN deployments as opposed to SDN really theory, yeah. which is what we launched uh, nearly two years back. Um, I know that VMware, VMware is involved in uh, nearly 70 SDN, SDN deployments right now. Can you tell us a little bit about that uh, trend? 
Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the, the, last, the last number we've publicly announced is that we now have uh, uh, over 400 customers and over 70 production deployments of SDN. We're busy. People are running production workloads over the, the SDN systems uh, day over day. You know, for, for me, this has been great, right? I think uh, f for a long time, SDN was a lot of PowerPoint slides and, and a lot of, you know, great ideas, but very little to show um, in, in, in terms of, uh, you know, actual uh, production. And uh, you know, we're now at a point where we're seeing both a large number of customers, um, as well as uh, you know, very, very large scale deployment. I mean, these are these are deployments with tens of thousands, maybe even hundred thousand virtual machines. Right, so it's so a very, very large deployments. And um, the even better thing is the, the rate at which this is increasing. I mean, I, I don't know the exact number, but we're probably adding somewhere between twenty-five and fifty um, uh, production deployments per quarter um, at the moment. So we, we're seeing. Uh, I think SDN is an idea. You know that is really crossed over in the mainstream, and, and we, we're seeing the adoption numbers in our customer base. Uh, you know that that they go along with that. Guido, well, you know, it seems very much that the the industry is embracing open standards. Uh, even here at the ONS conference, you can see that um, VMware specifically embracing OpenStack, Open Daylight. Uh, would you agree with that statement? So um, we're certainly embracing OpenStack, right? I think it's a it's a great. Um, uh, technology, uh, you know, in, in providing a consumption layer and also a set of open APIs. Right, uh, VMware is now has its own OpenStack distribution on top of vSphere, um, VIO that you might have uh, heard of. Um, but with NSX, we're also supporting KVM-based, uh, you know, OpenStack deployments. And in fact, some of our largest customers today are KVM-based. So it's something that's it's very, very dear to our heart. We know uh, here at the Open Networking Summit, uh, open source, open standards. Um, is, is a big part of the show, it's a big part of the industry, and it's a big part of software-defined networking. Um, how has that evolved over the last couple of years? It, 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 it is, and it always has been, I think, a major part of the SDN movement. And you know, we at, uh, at BMW are very committed to that. You know, we, we work well with OpenStack. Some of our largest customers today, in fact, uh, run um, in, in KVM uh, OpenStack uh, environments with, with NSX uh, underneath, you know, the largest NSX customers. We also uh, have, uh, you may have heard of Open vSwitch, which is the de facto virtual switch in the open source environment, you know, something that we heavily support, where, where still some of the key committers are, um, are at VMware. And we're actually having a, a workshop once a year, you know, where pretty much everybody from the industry um, you know, comes and, and, and uh, you know, together really thinks ahead, what kind of open source foundations do we need to build uh, you know, so that in the future you can then build the, 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 the production quality solutions on top that people use to power large networks. And we recently actually doubled down on that effort with something called OVN, something we're very excited about. It's a very lightweight L2, L3 um, uh, control plane that basically you know, extends the functionality of, of OVS. I would typically associate NFV, virtualized networking, with telcos. As you move up the stack to enterprise stakeholders, What's the value add? What's the value of NFV for these enterprises? So you know, there's different definitions for both NFV and SDN floating around. Uh, so it's it's it probably depends a little bit who you ask, but usually NFV is more used as a term to take a sort of intrinsic network functions that are offered to to a sort of a large number of consumers and virtualizing them as opposed to just creating an underpinning of a more flexible network, right? And uh, there are some um, large enterprises that basically have network functions that are big enough that they, they do want to, to virtualize them. It looks, starts looking more like NFV. But you know, my, my take is, at the end of the day, the, tech, the, the core technologies for both NFV and sort of a modern software-defined data center, at the end of the day, are solid server virtualization, you know, software-defined network underneath, probably something with storage you know, that, that goes along with it. So it's, uh, the, the, from a technology point of view, they're very, very similar. So what would you say is the next turning point for SDN, NFE, for the carrier or for, and or for enterprise over the next, say, three to five years? So I think we'll, we'll see a couple of things. I mean, one thing is I think we'll see wider and wider scale uh, adoption, right? We're now starting to see the first organizations that are not just deploying this, you know, as in part of the organization, they're really saying, we're just going to deploy this across our entire data center, right? You know, we're, uh, or in some cases, many data centers, you know, we're, we're basically, but this is of the standard networking platform that we see. You know, if, if you really take one step back and, and ask from a, from a high level, what is happening here? I think fundamentally networking is turning to a software industry. Right? This is the PC revolution all over again. The, the, the classically vertically integrated networking industry where you have 
the switch, you know, with silicon software and, and, and the system all bought by one vendor is disaggregating. In the future, you'll buy the software that powers your network and the hardware that powers your network from different vendors. And I think it will lead to the similar Cambrian explosion of creativity that we saw in the server market when this happened will now happen in the networking market. So I think, I think this will be a golden age for networking. So you think the fear of commoditization for uh, hardware equipment from the optics of a, of a telco are dissipating. It's getting less and less over time. And they're seeing the value in really the software side of the business. Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, we may see a shift in where the intelligence sits from the hardware to the software. But if you look at the PC revolution, it's not like that server sales stopped. And to the contrary, right? There was more and more hardware sold uh, as basically you were able to deliver more value with this hardware to the customers. So I'm very bullish on, on networking hardware vendors uh, just as much on software vendors. I think the, the main effect of this at the end of the day will be that customers get a lot more value uh, you know, from, uh, from, from networking than they did previously. Well, uh, both pioneers coming out of Stanford University, uh, Martin Casado and yourself, uh, both now at VMware, by the way. We are. Uh, mm -hmm. Pleasure to have uh, him on part one of our documentary series and now you on part two of our documentary series. Thanks for your time. Thanks, great to be here. Mm -hmm.